Hello, this is Alan Elliott, and this is SAS Essentials Mastering SAS for Data Analytics, third edition. This is part two of chapter six, Preparing Data for Analysis, SAS Advanced Programming. In this part two of this chapter, we're going to look at how to use SAS programming techniques to clean up a messy data set. As usual, if you'd like to follow along with the examples, please download the data files from this location. Let's get started. Okay, in this section 6.4, going deeper section, we're going to learn about how to clean up a messy data set. So many of the features in the SAS language are helpful in cleaning up a messy data set. And by messy, we mean that uh, data sets are not quite ready for analysis. Most data sets, uh, most data analysts experience problems dealing with files that contain data that have coding problems in them, and therefore they must be fixed before a proper analysis is possible. In fact, if you talk to any data analyst that uh, has had some years of experience, they'll tell you that a lot of their time uh, is often spent cleaning up data sets before they can actually do a proper analysis. So you need to know how to do this. And by going through this section here, hopefully this is going to give you some techniques and tips to make that process easier for you. So this section walks through a case study of a data set with problems and illustrates how you might correct them. Okay, here's a typical messy data set. Now this is actually uh, a pretty close to a data set that I received one time. I changed up some of the values to protect the innocent, but basically it's, it's pretty much the same as I received it. And you can see it has some errors in it, uh, some missing uh, date values and, and other things uh, that you can you can, might, can imagine, like age greater than 29 is not a, a proper age and so forth. So uh, we, we, in fact, identified several problems. First of all, some blank lines. Uh, there are non-date values in places, non-numbers in age, values of integer mixed up upper lowercase, and there are multiple answers in columns that should only have one, one column, one answer. So we're going to learn how to walk through and, and uh, apply some corrections to those that information and within SAS code. And the reason you would do this in SAS code, uh, you know, if you only have 50 records, uh, you would do this by hand in Excel before you import it into SAS. But oftentimes we have records with thousands, ten thousands, or, or many more records in there, and we don't have the uh, time to make all those corrections. And so uh, if you have a, a big data set, then it's much easier to uh, do it by using SAS code. Another reason uh, that you might want to do it in SAS code is that a lot of times if you're dealing with a data set that comes from some entity like a clinical trial or the government or some corporation or something like that involved in a grant, Oftentimes, they re require that you audit all changes made to a data set. You can't just go in there and make changes because you think it needs to be made. You have to audit it and keep a, a trail, an audit trail of that. And so doing this within the SAS code keeps that audit trail. So that makes it also a, a valuable part of doing this. All right, now we started with an, uh, an Excel data set. Uh, and because we're not really, this tutorial isn't about Excel, I'm just going to go, go ahead and show you what we did, and then we'll be in now in SAS and, and work from there forward. So the original labels in Excel, you can see I had some problems, like notice the one called one married. Well, that's you can't use a number as a part, uh, as the first character in a SAS variable. So you notice here we changed it to married. And uh, then column M, it says top reason you came here. Uh, well, first of all, that's a long uh, uh, variable name, and it's also two lines long. So we shortened that to top underscore reason, and you can see how we changed a number of the other ones. So once we changed it to the middle uh, uh, picture here, which is still in Excel, then uh, once we cleaned up the, uh, the column names, then we imported that uh, Excel file using proc import uh, to get uh, the data into SAS. Uh, still messy, but uh, the labels at least are workable. So here we have uh, the data set called messy data dot seven uh, sas seven b dat, and that's the data set we're going to be cleaning. 
Okay, the first thing we might want to do is fix the labels. So you can see here I have the, a, a, a table of all the variable names and uh, then uh, the type and the, and the label. These are the labels we're going to apply to these uh, variable names. Now, of course, as we've looked at previously, uh, the label helps you create a report that's maybe a little bit more reasonable than uh, just using sometimes the cryptic names uh, that uh, we use for the SAS, label, or SAS variables. All right, so let's start the process. Now, we're going to open up first the file called messy1.sas. Now, because this is a long procedure to get all the things fixed, we've broken it down into several steps. And so you're going to see there's going to be messy1, messy2, messy3. And each step, we're going to clean up a new part of the data set. And then finally, we'll have a, a one complete file that does all of the, the uh, corrections. And so hopefully, uh, by breaking it down and uh, just looking at one part at a time, it make it easier to see what we're doing. So this first time through, we're going to uh, create some labels. So we use the label statement, as we've seen before, and we give uh, a number of labels to the various variables, education, how I arrived, and so forth. Now, uh, in the uh, text, it's going to ask you to do all the labels. And of course, here's the labels that you can use to do that. We've just shown you a few here. Also, we're going to uh, make a few new uh, uh, variables. One variable is called arrival, but it's really arrival temperature. So we're going to change that name to TEMP. So we have a, a, a statement here called temp equal arrival. And then we drop arrival because we need no longer need the, the variable called arrival. We just want to keep the variable called temp. And then we also give it a label, arrival temperature. All right, the rest of the code in uh, messy1.sas displays the first 10 records so you can verify the changes. Uh, so as you see below, we're going to do a proc print data equal mysaslive.clean. So let me go back just quickly and show you that we started with this messy data data set and we're going to save it into a very data set called cleaned. So once we apply that information, we're going to print the, the uh, data set called clean, just the first 10 observations and uh, just some of the selected uh, variables so we can see how things are going. So here's what we have so far. You can see now that we have uh, years of schooling, arrival temperature. Uh, so we have nice uh, labels at the top, uh, and uh, but we still have some issues here. Notice here that we still have uh, arrival temperatures that are uh, in Celsius rather than centigrade. We have multiple answers for things that shouldn't have multiple answers. And so there's still some corrections that we need to make. All right, so and we noticed there then also that we created a new variable called temp uh, and we dropped uh, the variable called arrival and gave it a label. And here are all the labels that now you should have uh, uh, assigned. If you haven't done that yet, then uh, stop the tutorial and go ahead and fill out all of the, uh, the rest of the label uh, uh, statement so that you have all of the labels correctly defined for this data set. This is a typical thing that you would uh, do in a data set. It takes a little bit of time, but once you've got it done, then uh, the reports and the information that you print out is going to be much more readable. And here is what that will look like. So I will leave that to you to uh, do that in, the, in your SAS code. All right, now let's talk about fixing some other things. So we can fix case problems, that is uppercase, lowercase, and allowed categories and delete unneeded lines. To correct case problems, typically what we do is we can either make everything uppercase or lowercase for certain things. Like if we have male, female, and, and uh, sometimes they're uppercase, lowercase, let's change them all to uppercase. Or in this case, we have uh, a, a variable called how did you arrive, car, bus, walk. Not every time are they in uppercase, uh, you know, so we might want to correct that. A second common fix is to verify that all items in a category are allowed. For instance, in the how arrived variable, only car, bus, or walk is acceptable in, in this particular uh, survey. So how can we verify that, that uh, only that is, is listed? Well, we can do that with an if statement. Uh, and again, we're using some, uh, variable, uh, some functions that you can look at in Appendix B to find out exactly how these functions work. But what we're saying is if how arrived, not in car, bus, or walk. So what we're saying is, uh, how arrived has to be either car, bus, or walk. If it's not, then I'm going to assign it a blank. 
So in this case, I'm, uh, if someone didn't give a, an acceptable answer, then I'm going to replace it with a blank because I don't know what the exam answer is. A third easy to perform check is to delete irrelevant records. Uh, so we noticed here that I think line 17 was blank. Uh, so we want to get rid of that. It doesn't have any subject, so we can just choose some variable. And in this case, we say if subject equal null or blank, then delete. So what that did was it will delete all the records where there's no subject number. If there's no subject number, then whatever information we have is not going to be valuable because we don't have uh, a correct subject associated with that. All right, so now let's go to them to messy2.sass. Uh, note that it includes the labels from the previous exercises. So each time we go to a new uh, uh, messy whatever dot sass, we've done all the all the uh, uh, steps for you in the previous one. So at the top of messy2, you're going to see all the labels defined. That's fine. Now we're going to move on to the next fix, where we're going to do, as we just mentioned, we're going to change all the gender to uppercase. We're going to change all the race to uppercase, how arrived to uppercase, so all the things that are character values Typically, we change to uppercase simply to make it easier now to do comparisons and uh, changes. So once we got everything uppercase, now we can say if the how arrived, not in car, bus, etc. So we fixed that. And then uh, we said if subject equal blank, then delete. So we performed all three of those uh, uh, corrections now in Messy 2. And so uh, we've made some uh, progress here. Now, uh, just to verify that you can use this not in in some other things. For instance, now we can say if gender not in MF, then gender equal blank. So if we only allow M and F as genders, for instance, you might have a third one, X or whatever, uh, then you can use that in a list here. And if, if none of those genders match, then you assign it a blank. Because again, if we're going to do an analysis on, on somehow on gender, we need all of them to be val uh, valid uh, kinds of, of, uh, of uh, values. Uh, for correcting race, we have to use uh, some other things. Unfortunately, some people coded race as things that were not allowable. So if we say uh, race equal max or race equal M, then race equal H, because only H, C, and AA, Hispanic, Caucasian, African American, those are the only three legitimate codes. And so we see in here that sometimes A is listed instead of AA, so we recode that. We recode W, uh, which probably means white, to Caucasian. We re recode uh, X to not available or blank, whatever you want to do. So uh, do those kinds of corrections then uh, in this file. And then after we've done it, we can. Uh, the, there's code at the bottom of Messy2 that will display some of the uh, uh, information that we've corrected. So let's take a look. Now we've noticed that, a, uh, that race is all uh, corrected, and even there's one that's missing. Uh, how arrived at the clinic, there's no double uh, things here anymore, and gender is all uppercase. So we have begun cleaning up this data set to make uh, the, data's, the data uh, within it uh, much more uh, uh, in a way that we can analyze it. All right, uh, so there's a couple of troubling variables in this data set, and, and again, I, I encountered this in, in, a, in a data set that I found. Uh, one is that uh, the, the uh, survey has two questions. One, are you married? And, two, and another question, are you single? This probably uh, or normally would have just been asked either one or one of the other, one or the other, not both, because as we're going to see, the answers don't match. And so we're not sure exactly what's going on here. So technically, these two variables should be the opposite of one another. However, they're not, as we're going to see when we use a frequency analysis to, to take a look at the counts. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to open up now a file called discovery or discover discover1.sass. So this is not cleaning up the data set. All we're doing here is trying to discover some problems. So to discover the problem uh, uh, with married versus single is we're going to do a proc freak on the, on the data we've cleaned so far. Uh, and we're going to create tables of married and single and some other things as well that we're going to look at. Right now, we're just looking at the married table and the single table. Now, notice how the married and single frequencies don't match. Now, there's obviously 79 people uh, in both, but this one indicates that there are 43 single people, and this one only has 38 single people. 
and this one has 39 married people, and this one has 36. So they don't they don't agree in terms of, of how they uh, are stacked up. So now this is a very important point. We have to come to some decision to reconcile this problem. And typically, uh, this is not a decision the data analyst or the statistician makes. You have to go back to the source of the data, uh, and uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, whoever created the survey or the uh, researcher or wherever the data came from, and tell them, show them this problem and say, how should I reconcile this? Don't do it on your own, because uh, oftentimes, uh, the data analyst is not the person who collected the data. Uh, we're not the person who knows all the ins and outs of why certain things were collected. So the researcher needs to make the decision on to which one of these are going to be used. And we're going to see in this case, they decided to use the single uh, column because it was cleaner. Okay, uh, there's other uh, uh, problems that we found out with Proc Freak. One, we looked at the top reason for coming. Again, this should be uh, one, two, or three. And notice here, some people, and, and it has to do with, did you take a bus? Did you walk? Did you drive? Well, obviously some people may have done multiple things here, but we don't know, it's, it's difficult to know how to, to analyze those when we get to looking at uh, ways to analyze the data. So these uh, ones that don't match one, two, or three are pro problematic. Again, you might need to talk to the researcher, or uh, you might just say that those are unviable uh, uh, pieces of information, and we just need to uh, call them missing values. Uh, so one, so we can do the, the, these kinds of corrections. First of all, let's just drop the married variable altogether because we decided we were going to use the single variable, and then we can we have this not if race not in these numbers, then then make race blank. Uh, if the top reason was not equal to one, and the top reason was not two and the top reason was not three, then we're gonna make the top reason blank. Now we've seen other ways we could do this, like you could use the uh, select statement to do this, but we're just showing you some various ways you can do it. So uh, within messy three then, uh, we're gonna make these corrections. Uh, we might wanna go back to, once we've made these corrections, go back to discover one and make sure that uh, the, the corrections we've made now uh, are, uh, have been taken care of. All right, so let's look at another way to discover some information. So the first, the first discover one had to do with proc freak, looking at frequencies of things, uh, seeing if there were uh, counts that were out of balance or out of whack somehow. Now we're going to look at are there means that don't make any sense? Are there averages or sums or minimums or maximums that don't make any sense? So we're going to do a proc means, uh, max decimal to two decimal places on, again, the data set we've cleaned up so far and run it. Now this is only going to give us the means of variables that it thinks are numeric variables. So some of them don't really make any sense. So uh, subject, we don't care uh, really uh, about the mean of subject, but we do know that it should be between 1 and 79, which it is. Married, we got rid of that variable, so I won't talk to, about that. Uh, single should only be 0 and 1. That it's, that's correct now. Uh, if I uh, move this a little bit, you can see that education, years of schooling goes from 6 to 99. Well, that's not correct. We need to, we need to make some adjustments there. Satisfaction score is supposed to go from uh, 1 to 100. And so we see there's some problems there. And again, temperature, we see that uh, this, this was probably a, 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 a Celsius temperature. And who knows what this one is. We need to correct those kinds of things. So doing the proc mean, particularly in the minimum and maximum column, allow us to locate variables that have some problems, and then we need to work uh, to uh, clean up those problems. So we do that in the messy 4.sas dataset. So open up this file, and you'll see all the corrections we've made so far are above this section uh, in messy 4. And now we're going to correct some of the problems that we're seeing. So if education is 99, then we're going to assign it a missing because we don't know what that means. Uh, if the temperature is less than 45, we're going to make an assumption that temperature must have been in Celsius. So we're going to use a formula here that transforms a temperature from Celsius into, into, uh, into Fahrenheit. So if, if, a, if a temperature is too low, we're going to say, oh, how that's, that's Celsius, we're going to change it. We ask the researcher you know, to go back and double check this line that says 101.8, and uh, they came back to us and said, oh, that should have been 101.8. 
So we simply make that correction in here. And then again, if satisfaction is negative 99, then uh, that's not a valid score, so we're going to give that a missing value. Now, we notice uh, in this uh, file of means that age never showed up. And the reason age never showed up is because SAS, was, SAS saw in that column that there were some very values of age like greater than 29 that aren't really numeric. And so SAS assumed that that column was character. And so we need to convert age from character to numeric. And there's a number of ways to do this. Again, you can look in the appendix to see how this works. But I'm going to, I'm going to take the variable called age and use the input formula uh, function uh, with a point five or five point here to change it into a new variable. And I have to use a new name here. So I'm going to call it age in, which means age numeric, where it's this, the original age is a character variable, and I'm changing it to a new variable called age, age in, a numeric version of age. Now that we have, have gotten, we, now that we no longer need age, so I'm going to get rid of it and give a, a label to age in, which means age uh, in on uh, January 1st, 2014. So I've created a new variable by taking uh, a character variable uh, and uh, changing it into a numeric variable. Now what that's going to do is if there was a uh, incorrect uh, value in uh, age, then it's uh, probably going to end up being a missing value. All right, so uh, we now that age gen is numeric, we run uh, discover2, and we still see that there's a problem where we have ages going from 0 to 220. Obviously, that's not correct. So uh, we could do several things here. If we had a short data set, we might go in there and try to identify each, each person with our incorrect data uh, and see if we could correct it. Maybe the one that's 220, maybe they're 22 years old. Uh, or if we, if we have 10,000 records in there, we just simply can't do that. Then uh, with, along with the research, we make a decision to say if a, so a person coming to the clinic shouldn't have been less than 10 or greater than 99 years old. So we make this, uh, we make this decision and put this in there. If age is less than 10 or greater than 99, we're going to assign it to a missing value. Again, it could, someone could have been 101 years old. We need to make that uh, 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 decision alongside with the researcher to, uh, to make this correction. Okay, once we uh, add that to Messy 4 and rerun it, then we can rerun Discover 2 again and verify that uh, things are coming out right. And so now we see ages, which should be, which is much more like what we expect, uh, is between 18 and 65. Notice temperature that we corrected is now between 97 and 101.9. Uh, and, and all these other ones now uh, are in range of what we would expect for true values in this data set. All right, now just a brief aside uh, about correcting data. And I've already mentioned some of this, but I just want to go over this because this is very important. Uh, and that is statisticians or data scientists uh, work with other people in research. And we often inherit data sets from other places like clinical trials, experiments, uh, surveys online, etc. And so before making any uh, real data correct corrections, uh, we need to know who has the authority, knowledge, and responsibility for making those uh, uh, corrections. And uh, so, you know, I just have to leave that up to you, but you don't just willy-nilly start making corrections in a data set that is not your data set uh, that was collected by someone else and is going to be used maybe to decide, you know, what drug to give someone. Uh, it's very important that the, the data within the data set be as valid as possible uh, if it's going to be make, you know, make decisions uh, for, uh, for the future. And also, an, another reason to uh, do the, the way we did, as I mentioned, is that we now create an audit trail for all these things. So all these, all these coding things that we're doing in, this, uh, in these messy data sets, what we're doing is we're keeping track of all the changes we've made. So if anybody comes back and say, why was this data changed and how, we can go back to our code and say, this is exactly how and when and, uh, you know, that this uh, piece of data was changed. And uh, if it needs to be uh, corrected in a different way. We can easily change uh, one statement in SAS, rerun the program, and uh, clean the data in a slightly different way. All right, now uh, this one is a little bit more complicated, but correcting date and time values uh, is often important. In this case, we saw that uh, a date and time was gathered about when the subject arrived and when they left the clinic. And one of the uh, important information 
uh, pieces of information that this particular survey wanted to look at was how long somebody stayed in the clinic. So we're going to look at some uh, ways of correcting uh, date and time values that may be incorrect. And we're going to use this input uh, function we saw earlier uh, to do some of that. So again, you can go look in the uh, appendix to see exactly how the input function works. So in this case, we have a, a variable called date arrived. And what we're going to do is use this input function. Basically what it does is it's like it rereads the, uh, the uh, piece of data. So we're going to feed in a date arrived trim, uh, trims off some of the blanks in the data set. We're going to reread it as an mdmddyy10 dot uh, variable and put it into a new uh, variable called date arrived two. And we'll see uh, more details of this, but basically this is how input works. We give it a value, we give it a format. This is an input format. It, uh, it's, it's like as if it rereads it into a data set and puts it into a variable that we indicate. Now, let's also talk about converting time values. Uh, I might just mention that there's always more than one way to do these conversions. Uh, so, you know, if you uh, have seen a different way, that's fine too. I'm just showing you one way to do it, uh, and I'm not going to show you every way to do it, but this is one way that you should certainly do it. So let's look at converting time values. Uh, this is what a, a time value looks like. And uh, notice here we have a number and then A, where A typically is going to stand for AM or PM. First of all, we're going to look at uh, uh, a variable called time arrive and see if there's a blank in that, uh, in that value. Notice here there's a blank right here. So uh, if, if, it was, if it was stored like this, 1118.00 blank A, first of all, we want to know if it was that, did it really have an A or a P at the end of it? And if so, we're going to pull that out uh, to try to determine whether this was AM or PM. So I'm going to find the blank and assign it to the value of I. So in this case, I was probably equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It tells me that there's a blank in column 9. Now I'm going to create a new a variable, or I'm going to change time arrive by looking at the substring of time arrive, starting with column 1 and going to I minus 1. So if it found a 9, it goes 1 back. And so it's just going to, call, it's just going to uh, grab the subset or a substring of this, of this uh, piece of data by leaving off the last uh, piece of information. So what I'm going to end up with is 11.18.00. That's what time arrive is. I'm going to strip off that A there. Uh, now I might also do another thing, and that is find whether or not time arrived had a P in it. Uh, in, in the same way, notice here I, I found the blank, but I also could have found and to see if there was a P in it. Now what does that mean? It means that the data set uh, or the data value had uh, was probably PM. All right, so uh, so I'm going to create a new variable called time arrive uh, T, uh, and I'm going to again start with time arrive two, assign it the time uh, format time eight, and put that into this variable. So time arrive T is the time that uh, someone arrived. Uh, then if uh, if the time is afternoon, so if P was greater than zero, that means it's afternoon, I'm going to change uh, all the data into military time. So I'm going to say uh, if time arrived less than uh, this number here, which is the number of um, seconds in, a, uh, in, in, a, in the data, then I'm going to add that many. This is the number of seconds between uh, midnight and noon, so I'm going to add that many if it's PM. Because uh, uh, if I have, for instance, 5 o'clock PM, that's 12 hours plus 5 hours, or however many seconds that would be. All right, now I'm going to then take uh, this uh, time arrive t that I have now converted, and I'm going to use the function called dhms, which is uh, data hours, minutes, seconds, and now convert that into a new variable called arrived t, which contains both the data, I mean the date, the hour, the minute, the second. So now I have a, a single data that has all the information in there in a correct format so that I can I now have arrived uh, the, the time they arrived. I'm going to do the same thing for the time they left. Once I have this val value here, I can do subtractions. So I can subtract uh, when they left from when they arrived and tell how many seconds they've been there or convert that to minutes or hours or whatever. All right, so let's see how that's done in Messy 5. Uh, so 
In this case, I'm, I'm uh, formatting some, some of, the, of the, the new variables that I'm going to be using, date time 18, date 10, and so forth. Uh, I'm, I'm creating this new variable called date arrived to uh, that I created from date arrived. I find whether or not there's a blank. I find whether or not there's a P. Uh, I uh, 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 use the substring uh, uh, function to strip off uh, the e A or P or whatever is there. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, now trim uh, and, and, and input time arrived to that I created up here somewhere uh, and time arrived to. So I, I'm, gonna, I'm going to take that piece of data uh, format it as time five and again read it into now a new variable called time arrived t. If p was zero, then I add some seconds. And now again, I arrive at a final destination here where I call it arrive, arrived t that contains the date, the hour, minute, and seconds of that uh, arrival time. So I'm going to give it a label date and time arrived. Long process to go through here. Basically, you know, just follow along this example. Uh, uh, verbatim until you uh, get what's happening here. And again, there, may, there are other ways to do this, but this is, would certainly be one way. All right, so now that we have uh, run that, uh, it does a proc print, and we look at some of the things that we've, we've done. So we started out with a time date arrived, 2-7-2005, a time arrived, 11-18 uh, uh, a.m. Uh, we cr we uh, changed a uh, date arrived to a, a SAS-friendly a date, uh, the time arrived to a SAS friendly time, and then we combined them into one variable, February 7th, 2005, uh, at 11.18. And let's find one that's in the afternoon. Here's one that's 1.23 p.m. And notice here uh, that we uh, have made that correction too, and that's 13.23, which is in military time. So now we have all, uh, all the dates and times corrected for when the uh, subject arrived at the clinic. Uh, we can do the same thing for the, the time left, and I'm not going to go through uh, the various steps here because it's very similar to what we did earlier. But we basically, we're going to end up with a left, D, left DT, or left date and time uh, variable that is similar to that other one. All right, so now we can, we can calculate something called stay minutes. Uh, and we can look at the time they arrived, Oops, the time they arrived and the time they left and and tell it we want the number of minutes between that those two values and that's going to put, be put in a variable called stay minutes. So we're going to this will this is going to return a value of how many minutes they were in the clinic. We can divide that by 60 if we want to and turn it into stay hours. Obviously, minutes divided by 60 are going to give us the number of hours. Now, as we might suspect some of the dates were not exactly uh, pristine, and so some of the hours and minutes we get really don't make any sense. So here, here's the result when we print them out. Some of these look all right. This person was there for three hours. This person here was almost there for a whole day, four hours, 10 hours uh, missing. But this one is negative 1.2. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, so again, and this one was there for 8,000 8, hours. So those kinds of things don't make any sense. Again, if you have a fairly short data set, you might go in there and try to correct whatever data values, date values were in there that obviously caused this problem. Sometimes people get the year wrong or the uh, date wrong, or they get them, uh, uh, you know, the month and the year switched and, or the month and the day switched. And so you can end up with problems like this. If you have a very, very long data set and you just can't go in there and make individual changes, you could use uh, this uh, formula here or this statement here, if stay hours less than zero or greater than 48, uh, as long as the researcher says no one stayed more than 30, 48 hours, then we're going to assign it a missing value. So we're saying if people are outside of what we believe people would have stayed in the clinic, we're just going to call them a missing value. All right, a final check for this data set is determine if there are any duplicate records. And again, uh, this may be accomplished because oftentimes this data is typed in by someone and there are typing errors, and uh, so sometimes we can we can uh, find those typing errors simply by looking at things that don't look right using Proc Freak. So let's look at how we might do that. So this is example 6.11. We're going to do this, open up Discovery 3.sas, and we're doing going to do a Proc Freak uh, on the data again, the data that's cleaned so far. 
I just threw in this no print here because we're this is going to this would give us a very very long table and we're not interested in looking at the whole table. What we're doing is creating a table of subjects and we're outputting a new table called freak count. So again, I'm doing a proc freak on table subject and outputting the information to freak count. No print says don't print it because if I have 10,000 records, I don't want to see 10,000, you know, an output with 10,000 lines. So you want to do that. But now I'm going to do a proc print on this new data set called freak count. Notice the same name where count is greater than one. So what I'm saying is I'm interested in knowing if there's any subject IDs that were in there twice or more, more than once. Because if, there's, uh, if someone has the same subject ID, then there's something wrong uh, with that record and that we need to correct. So when we run that, we see actually there was one record, uh, uh, subject number 26 uh, was in there twice. And so uh, we, we go back in there and maybe look at 26. And actually, uh, it was, it was a, uh, the, the number uh, in, in the data set was actually the 27th record. So we say if the record, the, this n under, underscore n underscore means the record within the data set, if that was 27, then uh, change the subject name to 27. There's other ways you could do that. But again, to explain what, what's going on here, we had uh, in the data set, and you can go back there and look at it, uh, both subject 26 and 27 were labeled as subject 26. So we're changing uh, the one that was 27 should have been subject number 27. So we're making that change again uh, with the researcher's uh, uh, guidance there. All right, so we have now done a number of things. Now this doesn't guarantee that everything in the data set is clean, but we've gone a long way into cleaning up uh, a lot of the issues with this data set to allow us to uh, analyze the data. Uh, I would also do these checks visually and check the data for any other obvious problems. Uh, rename variables that have strange or unclear names. Label variables to make them readable. Fix the case problems. Delete unnecessary records. Uh, again, use procfreak to discover categorical values that may be incorrect. Uh, look for duplicated values, uh, variables particularly in ID or subject numbers. Use proc means to check for unusual minimum or maximums within numeric variables. Uh, make sure that you have dealt with missing value codes. Convert uh, variables that are not in the correct format. For instance, age was, uh, was a text variable. We needed to convert it to a numeric variable. And search for and reconcile any duplicate record. So this is just a, a little bullet point thing of the typical kinds of things you would do to clean up a data set. All right, the, the entire code for fixing this data set is included in the file called messy underscore all dot sass. You can uh, open up this and you can see it's a pretty long file, but you can look and see how each section builds on another to make uh, corrections as we go along here. So take a look at this uh, uh, file and see how this code provides an audit trail uh, for everything that you've done in this data set. So you can go back and, and show someone this is exactly why uh, this data may have been corrected or changed. All right, let's look at then uh, sec, uh, in example 6.12, open up the file called messy all.sass uh, and look through the code yourself and uh, note that it created a final data set named cleaned.sass7bdat. Uh, you could uh, open up that file using uh, by double clicking it, go to the explorer, double clicking on it. And again, I would go through this file visually just to see if you can see any other things uh, that may be wrong in this data set. Never uh, expect that when you run something in SAS or run something in any program that you've done all the things that uh, the way that you want it to do. If you created a new data set, always go, go in there and at least visually look at uh, as much of the data as you can. All right, so this is the uh, end of this uh, chapter. We looked at a lot of things that allowed us to uh, uh, see how we can change various things within SAS, clean up our data sets, make them more readable, make them more usable. We're going to continue with Chapter 7, uh, which we call uh, Advanced Programming Topics Part 2, uh, that will give us, again, some additional things that we can do to manipulate the data in SAS uh, with the uh, goal that we want to have uh, as clean and as logical a data set as we can before we do any analysis. Thank you for uh, watching this tutorial. I hope it was helpful to you. If it was, please subscribe and like. Thank you.